Is your name in this book of life? Is your name in this book of life here? This is Focus on Rapture with Collins Enyeribe. And the topic of our discussion is judgment of the world. In Acts chapter 17, verses 30 to 31, the Bible makes us to understand that God will judge the world. But he will judge the world through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Why would God judge the world? God will judge the world for millennia of ridicule, millennia of rejection. Um, a lot of people who have passed through this earth have always said there is no God. In other words, they have uh, made little the glorious creation and redemption program of the Lord. God will judge the world for worshipping the creation rather than the creator. Because God created uh, mankind to worship him. Jesus said, uh, you know, God is looking for those who worship him in spirit and in truth. And then God will judge the world for unbelief. Unbelief. They don't believe uh, that God will say what he said he will do or that God is who he says he is. They think that the world came into existence by accident. They think that you know, science can solve the problems of the world. So God will judge the world, but he will do it by uh, the hand of the, his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ has a mandate. That mandate has three distinct assignments. The first one is to come into the world as the Lamb of God to pay for the sin of the world. Jesus has completed the first assignment and is about to resume uh, the second assignment. But Jesus cannot begin to judge the world without taking or without being handed over the certificate of ownership of the earth. The earth has a C of O, certificate of ownership. It is called the scroll uh, and it's also in some places called the Lamb's Book of Life. So the scroll right now is with God the Father in the third heaven. In uh, Revelation chapter 5, verse 1, we are told that it is in his right hand. Jesus cannot take the scroll without his bride that will you know, become his wife. He needs his wife to be with him. His wife is actually the priesthood, the, 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 the called out one, the ecclesia, those who will form his body, who are the, his body, really. So he is the head of the church. The wife is the body and will be joined with him before he can take the scroll from the right hand of him who sits on the throne. Furthermore, judgment of the world cannot begin until uh, Jesus, the Holy Spirit has returned to heaven with the church. In the uh, uh, slide on the, on, the, on the screen, you see what we call Trinitarian schedule of duty, which clearly indicates that God the Father was in charge in eternity past, but because when it comes to creation and redemption, God forms, works in three persons of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So uh, from creation up to redemption, there is division of duty. Eternity past to Genesis chapter 2, verse 3, God the Father was in charge. Then he handed over to God the Son, where the Bible talks about the Lord God in Genesis chapter 2, verse 4. From there, the Lord God incarnated became the Son of Man and walked on this earth for about 33 and a half years and then uh, completed the first coming assignment. It was after he, 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 he was, you know, resurrected from the dead and ascended into heaven that he now empowered the Holy Spirit to come and form the church, which he did uh, on the day of Pentecost, as we read in, as we can see in Acts chapter 2. So from Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit took over. He's still in charge. He will continue to be in charge until we get to Revelation chapter 4, when he will now take the church 
that he has formed to heaven and then hand over the baton back to the Lord Jesus Christ. The ecclesia cannot be in heaven and handed over to the Lord Jesus Christ without being uh, raptured. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 14 to 17, we are told about how the dead in Christ and the living will be raptured and uh, will, be, will be raised. Uh, the dead in Christ will be raised and those who are living will be transformed with glorified bodies and then lifted up to heaven to meet the Lord Jesus Christ at the atmospheric heaven where he would have descended from the uh, heaven of heaven to the second heaven to atmospheric heaven to wait for them. And once they are together, that uh, the, the program in heaven will now continue. But you see, the ecclesia cannot be raptured without being judged. Because the scripture, which interprets the scripture, tells us in First Peter chapter 4, verse 17, that judgment must start in the household of God. So the, the house of God will be judged first. And how is that going to be? In um, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4, the Bible says marriage is honorable and the, uh, the bed on the fire. But womongers and adulterers, God will judge. That's God the Father. So God the Father will judge. God the Holy Spirit will judge. And God the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, will judge. But God the Father and God the Holy Spirit will judge on earth, here on earth. And by the Spirit of the Lord, I'm telling you that the judgment of the church, not the world, by God the Father has already begun. So, when it, uh, what, what is God the, the, the Father judging? God the Father is judging for all forms of ungodliness, unrighteousness, and wickedness. Um, particularly those involved with the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which is uh, concerned with the worshipping of idols, uh, idolatry of all kinds, and then worshipping of relics and things that are not God instead of worshipping God. And then you have the doctrine of the Nicolaitans that, you know, takes away uh, the position of God in the creation and redemption process. They call it, you know, humanism. And after that, in, um, you know, in addition to that, God will judge uh, for those who are involved in the doctrine of uh, uh, Balaam. The doctrine of Balaam has to do with uh, the god of money, the, 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 the mammon. Mammonism is um, another god to many people, and God will judge those people in the church. God will also judge those who are versed into the doctrine of Jezebel. The doctrine of Jezebel has to do with witchcraft and blood guiltiness. Those who think that you know, you can decide to kill another human being and nothing can happen. God will judge them. Do all those Christians, even those preaching the gospel, who are telling you that it is in order for a man to marry a man, or even a human being to marry an animal, and they are in the church, God will judge them. What is the purpose of the judgment? Is it to, for them to die? No. God is a God of mercy. He does not strike without giving warning. And so the judgment of God is actually warning to those, especially who are already in the fold, but who are being misled and deceived diversely. The idea is to shake them. God said he will shake all that can be shaken. So that those that can stand will stand, and those who cannot stand will fall by the wayside. So the, the judgment of God is to shake people to come and realize that they are off the mark and then be prepared for the rapture of the church. Because when the rapture takes place, those who refuse to repent, those who refuse to turn around and follow uh, the guidelines of the Lord and the warnings in the Bible, they will be left behind to suffer the wrath of the Antichrist. The judgment of the Holy Spirit is not again for the killing of people. No, 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 no. The judgment of the Holy Spirit is in line with what Jesus said about him in John chapter 16 when he said, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will judge for sin, for righteousness, and for judgment. 
That's the biggest. So he's judging the world now for sin. Those who come into the kingdom, he was judging them for righteousness. And at the end of the day, he will judge those who are standing firm to know uh, the, their fitness, eligibility to participate in the rapture. He is the one who will select the rapture. <laughs> Once that is done, he will then supernaturally lift up those he has selected to meet the Lord in the air so that the saints will be with the Lord forever. Now, the Holy Spirit will judge by selecting saints for rapture, and in heaven, the judgment of the church will be completed at the Bima. Bima is the judgment seat of Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, the Bible says, we shall all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Of course, the all day is not talking about everybody. It's talking about those who participate in the rapture. Because it's not everybody again who will be able to win a prize. Jesus said, I'm coming quickly and my reward is with me to give to every man according to his work. So, grace will take you to heaven, but work, the thing you've done, the obedience to the commandment of the Lord, both in terms of what was commanded individually and what is commanded generally will determine what kind of reward you get and your position in the eternal states. From the, first, the atmospheric heaven, saints will be taken to the second heaven and there a table would have been set for the first banquet in heaven. A, a, a prophet David uh, made an allusion to it when he said, Thou hast set a, a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Who are the enemies? Those wicked spirits that are there, because that's the headquarters of Satan and his and God. The, the wicked spirits are there, preventing God, uh, trying to prevent God from reaching men and trying to prevent human beings from reaching God. That's their duty, you know. They, they are working against God. They, 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 and then they will see the table set and the saints will sit according to hierarchy and have the first communion. Remember Jesus said, I, I will not drink the fruit of this vine with you anyone until I drink it with you new in the kingdom of God. That will be the fulfillment of that prophetic word. From there, movement will go to the heaven of heaven, the third heaven. And the first thing that will happen there is that angels will take sense to their various mansions. From there, they'll be led out into the throne room to see God the Father for the first time. And then the wedding of the Lamb will take place. Immediately after the wedding and simultaneous with the introduction of saints, one by one, to the Father will be the judgment, the 21 tribulation judgments. It will start with the seven seals, move on to seven uh, trumpets, and then seven balls. With those judgments, there will be a period of seven years. During that period, the saints also will be taught in some new things, uh, like what they will do on earth, where they will land, and their respective assignments. This will continue until the last day of the seven years. And uh, that last that day, while uh, the uh, supper or <clears throat> of the Lamb is going on, then there will be changes. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. 30 to 31, if you can read those three verses. It says, after the tribulation of those days, after the, you see, there, there will be two tribulations that will end on that same day. The tribulation, the uh, Heptad uh, Great Tribulation, which is the tribulation against uh, Gentiles, and then the Jacob Great Tribulation, which will last for three and a half years, uh, and end simultaneously with the Heptad Great Tribulation on the last day of grace. So after the tribulation of these days, changes will take place in the um, Saturn, in, in the stellar heavens. There will be changes in the heavenly bodies. From there, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints who will be with him at the, at the scene, 
that the venue of the marriage supper will be furnished with white horses with which they will now begin to descend like a cloud to the earth. And the Bible says all eyes will see them. They, they will now come and land. Jesus will land on the Mount of Olives and he, he, according to Zechariah chapter 12 verse 4, his feet shall astride the, the, the broken hill uh, on Mount, Mount of um, Olives as a result of the earthquake, massive earthquake that took place here. Yeah? And then he will look towards uh, the valley of Megiddo where armies of the world, three armies, the armies of the Antichrist, the jihadists, and then the 200 million uh, man army from the Far East, they will be there. And their function, their duty, they, why they are there is to stop Jesus from taking physical possession of the earth. And he will speak a word, and that word will cause massive destruction of the armies. You know, they will all be dead. Jesus, secondly, will now give commandment to the angels to select kingdom citizens out of those who survived the seven year tribulation period. And from this uh, kingdom citizens uh, selected, who now uh, join the remnant Jews who were preserved, who were kept, and then who now will be ushered into their kingdom after being reconciled to the Lord Jesus Christ, whom they rejected when he came the first time. And then what will follow? The kingdom. The kingdom will last for 1,000 years. And it's during this period that the earth will be replenished with citizens, some of who will obey uh, because of fear, but then they will be judged at the Battle of Gog and Magog. Thereafter, there will be the final judgment on earth, the White Throne Judgment. After the White Throne Judgment, which is a confirmation of the death sentence of those already in hell, and the, the millennial citizens who will also be thrown in, in, into hell on that final awful day, then God will create a new heaven and a new earth. And out of the new heaven will arise New Jerusalem, which will be the final abode of God, the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and uh, raptured saints. There will be people on earth, those earthly beings, they will not be raptured, but they live on earth, but they will have access to heaven, to the New Jerusalem, where God will now move his headquarters, and they remain with his uh, children forever and ever. And the uh, this word in First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 28 that says, after Jesus has resuscitated all things, he will hand the kingdom back to God the Father, that he may resume his position as all and all, all in all in eternity future. And that is the wish and my prayer for anyone listening to this message, that you will not miss your place in the new Jerusalem. Thank you for your attention. Remember to uh, click on our YouTube channel for other videos on Focus on Rapture.